Hello and welcome back to Trails Within Sky First Chapter. Let's go to the Perzel Farm. Look how peaceful this place is. <sighs> no matter when we come here, this place is always so tranquil. It's hard to imagine monsters running amok here. I certainly don't sense anything out of the ordinary either. Anyway, let's go ask someone to fill us in on the details. I wonder if Tio is home today. So these are Tio's uh, younger siblings, Will and Cher. It's Joshua! Did you come to play with me? I wish I had the time, but I'm afraid today I'm here for work. Work? That's so fun if we can't play. <laughs> Maybe later if there's time. The kids here really like you, Joshua. Oh, Joshua! Estelle! Hi, Cher. How have you been? Do you know where your mom and dad are? They're not home right now. Tio's outside if you want to talk to her, though. Hi, Tio. It's been a while, hasn't it? Estelle? And Joshua, too? Did you guys come for a visit? Not exactly. We're here on Bracer Business. We heard that you've been having some trouble with monsters. Estelle and Joshua explained that they are here to do their father's work because he's away. You finished all your training? That's wonderful news. Maybe you can help after all. So there really are monsters giving you trouble, huh? Regrettably, that's been the case the past several days now. Thanks to which, I'm suffering from a lack of sleep. Which means the monsters only come out at night. You're very perceptive, Joshua. It'd be better if you got all the details from my father, though. I imagine he should be back from delivering the milk and vegetables any time now. Ooh. I think the Perzel Farm is the only place in LeBurl where these uh, cow models show up. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Perzel. How's everyone getting on these days? Well, if it isn't a sound Joshua. What brings you to our neck of the woods? Did you come to see Tio? We were actually just chatting with her outside. To tell you the truth, we're here on Aaron, in Aaron from the Bracer Guild. Estelle hands Mr. Purzel the guild referral, and Joshua explains that they are taking over for their father while he is away. Is that so? But don't you think this job is a little dangerous for just the two of you to handle? I agree. I'd feel terrible if one of you were to get hurt. Don't sweat it. We're bracers after all. And taking care of monsters is right up our alley. The guild has even authorized us to carry out this task. If you wouldn't mind leaving it to us, we'd be more than grateful. Hmm... Well, all right then. Go ahead and have at it. Thank you very much, Mr. Purcell. Then, could you tell us a little more about the monsters that have been wrecking your fields? I haven't been able to get a clear look at one yet, but they seem to resemble something like a chubby cat. As far as I can tell, three or four appear at night and raid our fields, gnawing on anything they can get their grubby little paws on. They don't seem threatening exactly, but they're extremely nimble. We've tried many times to capture them over the course of the last several nights, but to no avail. Sounds like a pretty strange bunch of creatures, if you ask me. Since so they only appear under the cover of night, we'll have to wait for it to get dark. Then how about taking a load off until then? I assume you'll be joining us for dinner, right? You said the magic word! You bet I will. I'm a huge fan of your cooking, Mrs. Purcell. Can't wait. You sure know how to please a woman who spends a lot of time toiling in the kitchen. And for that, I'll whip you up something special that'll live up to your expectations. Oh, that was delicious. Your mom's cooking is good as ever, Tio. <laughs> That's because she gets excited to cook whenever we have guests over for meals. I feel really bad for Joshua, though. With the little ones jumping all over him like that. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. Surprisingly enough, kids tend to latch onto him a lot. If anything, I'm more blown away by the fact that the children enjoy playing with such a stick in the mud. I think that's a bit of an over-exaggeration, don't you? He's definitely courteous and maybe even a tad reserved, but... If you get to know him, he's a really caring young man. The fact that he's not self-conscious about it, too, gives him points in my book. You really think so? Think about it. With those striking facial features, mysterious amber eyes, and lush black hair. 
It's only natural that he'd be a target for all the young girls. Is Joshua really that popular? Are you blind, Estelle? Rumor has it that more than just a few girls have asked to go out with him. I hear that he turned them all down, though. I, I had no idea. Joshua never said a word to me about it. I don't know how I should even begin to describe his secretive nature after hearing this, but how utterly cruel of him not to confide in me. If you were a boy, I imagine it would be a different story, but as a girl, I don't think that's something he would want to talk to you about. And the fact that you haven't fallen for him yourself is beyond me. Huh? Why would I? Estelle, you're in there, aren't you? It's about time to do our rounds. Uh, Alright, I'm coming. I'll be back after Joshua and I get the job done, Tio. I'd like to continue this conversation then, okay? Oh, alright. But be careful out there, Estelle. That girl. She's either completely out of touch with matters of the heart or just plain dense. Poor Joshua. He really has his work cut out for him. Seems as though the monsters always show up at about this time. We better get outside and take a look around. Mm. Uh, what's going on, Estelle? I've got to ask, Joshua. You don't happen to have any secrets you're not telling me about, do you? Uh, come on now. Where are you coming up with this stuff? Since you came to live with us, we've always done everything together, right? Even though we've had our fair share of fights, they're all good memories for me now, and... What I mean to say is, I've come to think of you as family in every sense of the word. <laughs> Still. So, if there's anything on your mind you'd like to talk about, I'm available to lend an ear. You know, about things like trouble with your love life and whatnot. What are you trying to say? D nothing. I just wanted to let you know that I'm here to listen if you need someone to talk to. That's all. Let's hurry up and get out there so we can kick some monster butt. What kind of nonsense is Tio putting into that girl's head? Secrets, huh? Wow, it's really dark out here in the countryside. So Joshua, how do you think we should go about making the rounds? Let's see. How about we start by checking around the house first, and then move on to the field, stable, and greenhouses? We should be able to cover the entire farm by doing it this way. Alright, let's go! Create a save file here. Alright, let's check around the farm. Not quite sure what it is you have to do in order to advance things. I know it just happens eventually as you check places. I should have figured monsters wouldn't bother coming in here. The glow of ornaments sure give this place a romantic ambiance. Makes me feel like it was all worthwhile just setting foot in here. You are definitely a dense cell. At least it's better than being dense like someone I know. Alright, how about these fields? Let's see. Here we go. It's awfully quiet. All I hear are the bugs chirping. It doesn't look as if they've shown up yet. I wonder if they're aware of our presence. Hey, Joshua, did anyone ever tell you that story as a kid? You know, the one about babies being born in a cabbage patch? Now there's another question entirely out of the blue. And no, I was told about an angel with silver wings who delivers them. Interesting. So the explanation for where babies come from differs depending on the region, huh? How about we get back to work? Okay. <laughs> hmm... Now to the southern half, over by where the cows were. Oh, they're still here. No monsters here. All right, let's keep moving. Now if we double back to a location we've already been, Psst, look! getting away! Hey, get back here, you little furball! I can still sense its presence. It's staying put on the farm for the moment. Well, good. 
because it's about to get caught. Let's save here. I don't know whether or not uh, how you catch this monster affects your bracer score or anything. But I believe you can sneak up on it. Let's see if I can do this slowly. I got him. I think it's time to teach this critter a lesson. Here's where our job really starts. So stay alert and don't let your guard down. Here we go. These are crop munchers. Giant crop munchers preparing arts. Airstrike. Oh, it did damage. And we're done. My goodness, the work of a bracer is something else. You kids have done a fine job of rounding up these critters. <laughs> it was nothing, really. I want to ask you, though, now that they've been caught, what do you plan on doing with them? Uh, I don't think your choice matters too much, and they kind of mean the exact same thing. Now that we've given these critters a good thrashing, I don't think they'll cause any more trouble. Estelle, how's that going to benefit anyone if we show these creatures any mercy now? We're here to do a job by exterminating the monsters, remember? But, in any case, we're here to do a job in Dad's place. The same thing happens again. What will you have to say for yourself? I see what you're getting at, but... You know, it was only some vegetables that were damaged, so... What do you think about letting it slide this time? You know, after taking a beating like that, I'm sure they've learned their lesson. Tio, Mrs. Purcell... But in this case, I strongly suggest otherwise. I myself am against killing them too. Whether it's us or them, the fact of the matter is, we're all living beings trying to survive on the same land. To some degree, I think we need to be mindful of those creatures living around us as we go about our daily lives. I know you may disagree with me, Joshua, but would you mind sparing these critters just this once? Understood. Since this is coming from the ones who suffered the actual loss, I won't object to your request. I'm really sorry about this, Joshua. I know I had you two come all the way up here. I'll make sure to reinforce the fence and devise a way to prevent this from happening again. Then that's that. Alright, you critters. You better count your blessings. If we catch you around here again, you won't be so lucky. Now scram! Well, I'll consider this matter close. Tonight's been a long night. So how about we head back to the house and hit the sack? The two of you are more than welcome to spend the night. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I appreciate your hospitality. Man, I'm beat. It's really late, so how about we hit the sack? Joshua? What's wrong? I'm sorry. I made the situation really awkward for everyone. Huh? Are you talking about what happened back outside? <laughs> Don't sweat it. I guarantee you nobody thought anything of it. Really, your judgment was the most sound of anyone's. No, it wasn't. I'm just cold-hearted and indifferent is all. Even now, I still think we shouldn't have shown any mercy and simply put those creatures out of their misery. Unlike you and Tio, I don't feel any compassion. It's at times like this that I really begin to loathe myself. It's almost as if there's something wrong with me as a person. <laughs> Maybe some part of my heart is broken or something. Joshua! Don't you dare say things like that about yourself. Estelle? I've watched almost everything you've done for the past five years. And I'm confident in saying that I know your strengths and weaknesses better than anyone else. Probably even more than you yourself. I won't allow you to just disregard everything with a bunch of nonsense. I don't ever want to hear you say you're broken again. I'm sorry. It was foolish of me to say that. As long as you understand what I said, then that's what really matters. But you know what? Believe it or not, I was happy to hear you admit how you felt. Why? Your real problem, Joshua, is that you always try to keep your feelings locked up inside. Whenever you're troubled or worried, 
You just go around with this nonchalant look and try to fix everything by yourself. That's a little upsetting for someone who's supposed to be your family. Estelle, I... Joshua, you were able to lay bare your own weakness today. You learned to trust in someone other than yourself. And for that, I'm happy. I, I don't know what your point is, but... I'm amazed that you can just stand there and say something as embarrassing as that. Hm, I've got a whole lot more where that came from. But how about we call it a night? After all this endless running around, I'm ready to drop. Alright then. Have a good night, Estelle. And thanks. You're welcome, Joshua. Sleep tight. Thank you both. You did us all a great service. Once again, I apologize for things not turning out the way they should have. Please don't worry about it anymore. We were able to learn a lot from this experience ourselves. If there's anything else we can help you with in the future, please let the Bracer Guild know. That'll definitely be the first place we contact. And come visit again sometime when you're free, okay? We'd love to have you over for the night again when things are, when things are convenient for you. I'll treat you to some of my best cooking next time you come. Thank you for the invitation, Tio and Mrs. Purcell. We'll definitely be back to take you up on that when our workload settles down. Alright, how about we head back to the guild? After we report this one, we can start on the next. Sounds like a plan. On to the next one. Alright, on to the next one. That's a fun scene. A fun little little job. Not many uh not many quests you get to do over the course of this game and the next. Have you doing bracer jobs where uh you actually like take an entire night to do it. But the question is, and it doesn't seem this is the case, is even though we went and did that job, there doesn't seem to be whole a whole lot different about Relent in terms of like the layout. But maybe. I know uh off camera I went and looked for Armin and Ellie some more and I never found them. This woman, Radmir, is still here. Oh, her dialogue has not changed either, so maybe things haven't changed too much. Oh, what a troublesome little kitten. Could she be taking a nap somewhere? That woman, Ida, was uh, standing or sitting at the uh, the tables the other day before we went and did that job with, uh, with a cat next to her. So we had four new jobs on the board. Mushroom Hunt. Orvid. Or Orvid Co. Limited. I'm looking for a rare mushroom that grows only where where there are rich deposits of septium in the ground. Should be an easy, fun job. For details, please come seek me out. My name is Orvid, and I'll be waiting at the landing port. Uh, I saw Orvid actually around town the other day. He was, uh, I don't know. I think he's in the Orbital Factory. Orbit replacement from Freddy. This is the guy who works at the, uh, the Orbital Factory. I'm looking for someone to replace a malfunctioning Orbit light and a road lamp on Milch Main Road. For details, please see me at Melder's Orbital Factory. Medical Necessities from Father Divine. I'm searching for a flower known as a bear claw and a savory pinion. The flower is native to the forest of Mistwald, South Rolent, and the latter comes from insect-like monsters. Anyone who finds these, please come see me at the Rolent Chapel. And Soldier Training from CWO Ashton. The soldiers stationed at the Vert Bridge are set to undergo special training. We're looking for a few good men or women to play parts the part of enemy soldiers. If you're up to the task, contact Chief Warrant Officer Ashton at the Vert Checkpoint on the west end of the main road. Good morning. How did the job at the farm go? Um, we hit a few bumps in the road, but let me give you a brief report on the details. Joshua gives Aina a rundown of last night's events at the farm. I see. So you ended up setting the monsters free because of the Purzel family requested you to do so? I think it was premature on their part. But I won't pursue the matter any further. Is it okay to leave things at that? The mission of a bracer is to protect civilians and uphold justice. However, there are many ways we can protect those around us, and there are as many forms of justice as there are stars in the heavens. As a bracer, it is your job to be able to discern these things. Indeed, our work has very profound implications if you think about it in that way. That's because we aren't an organization that deals strictly with monster problems. We also intervene when disputes arise between nations. To become a high-ranking bracer, one must have more than combat strength. A well-honed mind and flexible problem-solving skills are also required. 
a sharp mind, and problem-solving ability, huh? Serious? The road to the big league sounds a lot steeper than I originally thought. <laughs> well then, your choice is to devote yourself to working hard every day. And since you're both here, why don't I give you the details of your next job? Those are the words I've been waiting to hear. I'm ready for anything, so what you've got lined up for us this time? Another monster that needs a good whipping? Not this time. The next job will entail the transportation of goods. And get this, your client is none other than Mayor Klaus himself. Really? A request from the mayor? Do you think it'll be alright, leaving such an important task up to us? From what I've heard, it's a pretty simple job. In any case, I'd like you to speak with the mayor directly about the job details. We can do that, but we gotta do these first. Um, let's go, let's go talk to Orvid. This dude. I'm familiar with you, Mr. Orvid. He's at the landing port. He's this guy. Darn bracers. How long do they intend to keep me waiting? If they don't hurry and get here, I'm going to miss my flight. Should have expected as much from a rural backwater burg like this. Huh? Oh, well, I'll be. That's the bracer emblem, if I'm not mistaken. I've been waiting for you to show up. I have an urgent job, so do I have some time to hear- So do you have some time to hear my request? Uh, sure. We've got some time. Great. This really helps me out a lot. Alright, let me give you a rundown and explain the details of the job. Let me formally introduce myself. I am Orvid, representative for Orvid Co. Limited. I'm Estelle, and this is... Joshua. Nice to meet you. Estelle and Joshua, is it? The two of you are quite young, if I do say so myself. <laughs> we are actually pretty new to this old bracer thing. Greenhorns. Oh well, I guess you'll have to do. Pardon? <clears throat> uh, never mind. I was just talking to myself. Alright, let's get down to business. Please excuse my lack of decorum, but I'm in a bit of a hurry. Sure. At the moment, I'm looking for a rare mushroom called the Firefly Fungus. It is said that it only grows in soil rich with septium. There are records of it being picked here in Relent, but no shops seem to carry it. However, it is a vital necessity that I get my hands on one, so I put in a request at the guild house. Soil rich with septium, hmm? I can only think of the Malga Trail as a possible location. Do you know any other characteristics of these mushrooms? It seems that it normally grows in areas with patches of grass. However, since it is buried in dirt, if you don't look closely, you won't find it. Jeez, this sounds like it's going to be a pain. But once you dig one up, you'll know if it's a firefly fungus or not. For one thing, it glows with a light green color. So that's why it's called a firefly fungus? Well, that makes sense. Alright, have I explained things clearly enough? So basically, all we need to do is find a glowing mushroom and a patch of grass along the Malga Trail, right? Looks that way to me. Well, if they're really growing in the ground, we probably won't be able to find one so easily. If you run into any trouble, come back and speak with me again. I ask that you find one as soon as possible. Alright, so we know that one. I actually want to talk to uh, all our potential clients here before we start venturing out of town. So let's go into the chapel. Well, if it isn't Estelle, you seem to be in a cheerful mood as usual. Here you are. These are for you, Father Divine. Hand it over the bear claw and the savory pinion. Because of the new game plus carryover, I already had the stuff that he needed. This is the bear claw and savory pinion you were looking for. Please use them as medicinal ingredients. You requested these at the guild, right? That's right, I did put in a request. I'm just surprised that you went to all the trouble to do this for me. Weren't you hurt trying to gather these? Nope, we're totally fine. Literally, I didn't do anything. I mean, we were fine. Well, maybe minus the totally part. <laughs> I'm worried about your attitude, Estelle. Eh? Why? There's nothing to be worried about. I know I've told you this before. It's certainly a joyous occasion when everything goes well. However, it is at these times when we should gird up our loins for the trials that lie ahead. Okay, I'll be more careful from now on. Hmm, since I seem to have a bit of spare time, how about I take this opportunity to give you a special sermon? No, anything but that. I'm sorry, Father, but we've really got to get going. You've still got work left to do, right, Joshua? 
Why did you have to bring meat into this? Uh, please excuse us, Father, but we have to get back to the guild. That's too bad. However, since it has to do with your job, I must respect your position. Thank you for all your hard work, Estelle and Joshua. I pray that the goddess will always be with you. Who's this? I see. I completely agree with your inspired words. I talked to him again. Thank you for all your hard work, Estelle and Joshua. I pray that the goddess will always be with you. All right. So let's see. We also got, uh, who else? Need to find that mushroom. All right, I need to talk to Freddy. And I also need to go all the way out to uh, the Vert Bridge, which is uh, on that uh, at the end of the Milch Main Road. So going to the west towards the next region. No, not Renown. Actually, we could stop in Renown's. And talk to Bloom. Looks like my son is too busy with running a store to worry about other things. Men reach manhood status by having a family and rearing children, not by staying single. I guess this is my time to give a helping hand as a mother. <laughs> she won't stop. She'll never stop. What's up, Freddy? Well, hey there. You two new bracers seem to be having some success lately. I've been hearing a lot about your hard work recently. It's only been a day. Yeah, that's because we're still new at this, so we have to work extra hard. That's encouraging to hear. You guys actually came at a good time. I've got an urgent job that needs to be taken care of. Do you think that you'd be able you'd be up to the task of replacing an orbit light and a road lamp along Milchbane Road? You just leave that to us. If you're fine with us doing the job, then we'll gladly accept. Thanks, I really appreciate this. I completely forgot it needed to be replaced today. First off, I'll need to give you the replacement part. This is the replacement orbit? That's right. I want you to replace the orbit light in road lamp number six on the Milch Main Road to the west. It's the sixth road lamp that you'll come across counting from Rowan's west entrance. Make sure you get the right one. I think I've got it. The sixth road lamp from Rowan's west entrance, right? Once you've found the road lamp, you'll need to open the maintenance panel. You'll need a six digit combination to open it. Are you serious? Yep, the combination for the sixth road lamp is 544818. Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat that again? It's 544818. That's right, good memory, Joshua. Show off. After the combination is entered, the panel will open. And after that, all that's left is to replace the ornament. It may seem like a simple task, but make sure not to mess it up. The road light may have been out of order for a while now. I see. The light of the ornament keep the large monsters away, right? It's not much more than an unconscious dislike for them. But if they do go out, then we run into real problems. Which is why I'm asking you to do this job just in any case. These road lamps are placed just off the roads in areas where monsters are more likely to appear. Well, you just leave those monsters to me and I'll take care of them. But I'd better write down that combination before I forget. Then maybe you should let me deal with the combination instead. I'll leave it up to you two to divide up the work amongst yourselves. That should be everything you need to know, so good luck. If you need to double check or cancel the job, then come talk with me again. I think I have like that entire number committed to memory, but I've never checked to see whether or not, uh, yeah, I still writes it down in the notebook anyway. 544818. Let's see, so there's that. And the other job, will uh, also take us that way so we can go knock these two out at the same time. Let's go. But I should create a save file just in case. Never know. So having a lot of save files is great, uh, namely for the uh, the missable items as well as missable quests. We've yet to uh, encounter it, but uh, this game does, the series, likes to throw in hidden quests sometimes that uh, don't appear on the at the uh, guild house they don't appear on the board you just have to talk to someone who turns out to be in trouble you can help them out they'll give you extra pay and extra bracer points so those come up from time to time but they always have a limited window but the books are the main problem <laughs> those are super limited windows but uh, I'm pretty confident I know where the second one is anyway so we're looking for Ashton who's the CWO here, he's this dude. 
Oh, if it isn't Estelle and Joshua too. Hello, Mr. Ashton. It's been a while since we last met. Yes, it has. So I've heard my boy Luke caused you a lot of trouble, did he? This is Luke's dad. I'm absolutely ashamed as a father. I'm sure it's perfectly normal for a boy his age to be naughty like that. I mean, even I ran around outside of town when I was young. Yeah, and you were supposed to be a girl. <laughs> You're certainly full of energy as usual. I'd love to get you to share some of that vigor with my new recruits. I've been thinking recently about doing a simulated battle to whip my men into shape. So, I put in a request at the guild for a few good men or women to play the part of enemy soldiers. I think the pair of you would be the perfect fit for the job. So how about it? Can you do this for me? Sure, we'll do it. We'll gladly accept. Thanks, I really appreciate this. Go ahead and take a break until the preparations are ready. If I don't have you in tip-top condition, then there's no point in doing the training. <laughs> then I'm ready for an afternoon nap. Alright then, we'll get ourselves ready. Sure, please do what you need to do. Alright, time for these 16-year-old kids to whip the Lepurlian Royal Army. Alright, training begins now. Everyone, advance five steps forward. Ready yourselves. I know I was bored before, but... I know it's just training and all, but it still scares the living daylights out of me. This is a training exercise, so please refrain from speaking. You all need to take this seriously, as if this were a real battle. Estelle and Joshua, you don't need to hold back on my men. That was my intention from the beginning. We'll do as you request. Uh, yikes. Forward. That's some army you got there, Queen Alicia. Cease fighting. This training is over. Ow, 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 ow. Oh my goodness, it's finally over. Good job, everyone. Can I say pathetic? <laughs> Are you guys really supposed to be soldiers? Uh, hey, you be quiet. We're not all feral kids like you. How about you try and say that one more time? Knock it off, Scott. Training is over. You seriously need to cool down to a cell. I hate sore losers. Private Scott, Private Harold. I think what Acel said just a moment ago is how the citizens of this region really feel. Do you really have what it takes to protect them? It seems as though the both of you need to take another look in the mirror. N yes, sir. Very good. Do not forget what you learned today and strive to fulfill your duties. So, Joshua, thanks for your hard work today. Thanks to you, I think my soldiers have gotten the wake-up call they needed. There's no need to thank us. It's us who should be thanking you. This was excellent training. I agree. This was a good learning experience. <laughs> if you think so, then you're set for life as bracers. Though our positions may be different, we are both here to serve the public. Although I can't do much else, I'll pray for your success for the both of you. Sure, and thanks again. Take care of yourself. I will. And I hope to be seeing you again sometime. Alright, we still got that uh, road lamp to fix. I don't think you can actually like solve the wrong one. Yeah, you can only interact with the correct one. Which is somewhere. Guess it's on the next screen. This one may be here we go. From what Freddy said, I think this is the road lamp. I'm fairly certain this is the right one, too. It says road lamp number six on the panel as well. You're right, it does. Alrighty then, let's get to work and finish this job. Unfortunately, it may not be that easy. What do you mean? Where'd all these monsters come from? Looks like the orbit really has burned out. Anyway, one of us will need to fend off these monsters while the other replaces the orbment. Yeah, you're right. Well then... Okay, that's a bug. You see the second Joshua appeared on the right? So, uh, this game, this series, or at least the, the Sky games, 
They were originally designed for PC in the mid 2000s, so that was kind of before widescreen had been widely adapted. So occasionally bugs like this will appear that uh, you normally wouldn't have been able to see in a 4x3 aspect ratio. So you hear me, uh, I'll probably joke a lot in this game and the next about like weird things you see because of the 16x9 ratio. Oh, it's so dumb. How about you handle them, Joshua? Do you really know how to replace one of those things? Come on, Joshua, how hard could it be? Even I can do something as simple as replacing an ornament. Says the girl who glued her hand to her head once. But all right, if you say so. I'm counting on you, Estelle. Got it. All right, so Joshua goes all by himself to fight these uh, flying felines. Which really aren't a threat. They are not even going to do damage. That takes care of the first wave. How's it coming, Estelle? I'm entering the combination for the maintenance panel right now. Um, I'm pretty sure the code was... Uh, it's the third one. 544-818. Okay, 544-818. It's open! Sometimes I'm too smart for my own good. I'm okay here, Estelle. So just focus on fixing the lamp. Got it. Now for the orbment, which goes in like that and... Voila! Perfect! Could work as cell. All the monsters seem to have gone too. Phew. I sure got all stressed out over this job. Considering the circumstances, it seemed pretty reasonable to me. But the thing that surprises me the most is that you remembered the combination. Do you want to know the truth? I actually just saw a jumble of numbers in my head, and the buttons I happened to press were the right ones. I should have figured as much. Here's something else. A anyway, our job is done here, so let's just think about something else. I guess you're right. Alright, how about we head back to town? We'd better go report to Freddy. Alright, let's go. So we'll do that, we'll report to Freddy. We've still got one job to do south of town. We have not explored too far south of uh, Rolent, besides uh, just going to and from the Bright House. But there is a highway that extends uh, further south of that. And pop in and talk to Freddy. Oh wait, that's Renown's store. We're back, Freddy! Oh, hi, Estelle. From the look on your face, it seems like you finished the job. Yep, and we did a fine job, too. Although we did have a few hang-ups. We thought we'd report to you as a matter of good measure. Reported the events which occurred on Milch Main Road. So it really was burnt out, huh? I'm sure it happens because we were late replacing it. Sorry, kids. You were put in harm's way because of me. There's no need to apologize. It comes with the territory. Dealing with dangerous jobs is part of a brace's work. I appreciate you saying that. Oh, I know. How about I give you this to make amends? MP2 quartz. This is a quartz? Yep, it's an MP2 quartz. It can prevent an enemy's arts. It can be pretty useful if you use it effectively. Thanks! We appreciate it. No thank you to the both of you today. If you need to discuss anything about the about ordnance, then stop by any time. Don't forget to swing by if you have any other business needs. Alright, moving on. So I believe uh, you don't get the maximum score for that, uh, for that quest. If you uh, do not choose to uh, have Estelle be the one who replaces the orbit and thus miss the opportunity to uh, correctly enter the code. Alright, so moving south past Relent, past the Bright family house. This would be the, uh, what's it called? Elise Highway. And eventually there's a little split on the path that'll take us to the area where we're going to find this Oh no, wait, I am super dumb. I apologize. Actually, let's stay here anyway, because I wanted to do this no matter what. But uh, I was thinking of getting the Bear Claw. That's what you get out of Mistwald, the uh, the forest to the south. But the uh, thing Orvid wants, the uh, Firefight Fungus, that'll be found on the Malga Trail. So here's the road into Mistwald. It's a forest that goes that way. You can see it on the map too. 
But the reason I chose to stay on here actually is I wanted to show off what's uh, the furthest to the south here. Let's see, West Grancel to Gurren Gate. Also, you see that the uh, what the measurement is Selge. So uh, Kiseki Trails has a bit of a uh, fictional measurement system. Whoops, uh, like a metric system. It doesn't apply to everything. I don't. I don't remember if there's an equivalent for uh, for like liquids. I think I had a like a conversation recently about how there's no equivalent to ounces, but things like centimeters and meters and whatnot, miles, kilometers don't exist in this universe. So you got uh, things like Selge and Arge. And uh, this is Garn Gate. So if we try to go even further than here, Joshua says this leads to Grand Cell. I don't think we'll be able to go through here without a pass. Well, the reason I came over here is because I don't know if we'll ever get a chance to see this particular location again in the rest of the playthrough. But this is as far south slash southwest that uh, the road from Relent goes. And it actually leads into the capital, Grand Cell. Now, as we advance through the game, we'll actually be doing the exact opposite of this direction. We'll end up going not clockwise, but counterclockwise through the kingdom. So we'll be going to the other regions, Bose, Ruan, Zeiss, and then Grand Cell. So that's why uh, you don't uh, get to see this side of Gurren Gate unless you uh, choose to come here out of your way in the prologue. And the first time I played this game, I definitely did not even like see this location at all. I was not inclined to go here. Now granted, I wasn't super familiar with how this game worked the first time I played it. So I didn't know that like the second that uh, the second you leave a region in this game, you never return. Not in this game anyway. So uh, when we're done in uh, Relent, when we get to leave and start seeing other places, we won't be going back to Relent. That's just the way it works. All right, so let's get back into Relent, though. We're not leaving there just yet. There's still a lot to do. And eventually we'll find out what it is, why uh, why Cell and Joshua might want to leave home and start journeying, journeying around the kingdom. But for now, we've got plenty of work on our table as it is. So our, uh, the mushroom we're going to get, the Firefly Fungus, is located north of the town, also on the Malga Trail. Obviously, we came through the Malga Trail once before to uh, chase down Luke and Pat. The Malga Trail also splits off, uh, there's that fork in the road, and we went the left way to uh, Smellus Tower. But there is a right way, which is not on this screen, it's on the next screen. Here we go. So the right is uh, Malka Mine. So that is a, uh, it's a Septium Mine, in fact. In fact, it's the only active Septium Mine in the kingdom, I think. So let's see, let's get a look at a map. So I believe uh, our uh, mushroom is gonna be in that dead end alcove over on the right. Here we go. Oh, there's a chest, too. White bracelet. This chest is now full of disappointment. Aha! What's with the sudden outburst? I found it. Now to claim our prize. Found the Firefly Fungus. Isn't that... You think so, too? The place it's growing seems about right, and it's got that soft green glow. This has got to be that Firefly Fungus that What's-His-Face is talking about. You mean Orvid, right? Yeah, that's who I meant. It doesn't look all that tasty, but it sure is pretty for a mushroom. Almost like the glow of Septium, if you ask me. Septium? What's up, Joshua? I may be worrying too much, but I think you better put that mushroom in your bag quickly, Estelle. What the? Just like I figured. This mushroom attracts... Estelle, look out! It attracts monsters. So monsters really enjoy Septium. They, uh, they really like it. Now, and why that is, I couldn't tell you, given that Septium's super fictional, and it's a crystal mined out of the Earth that creates orbital energy and whatnot. All this crazy fictional science. But yeah, like, you wonder why monsters drop Sepheth? 
Because it's like inside of them or something. They eat it? I don't know. That's that. Let's move out. It's like, don't worry about it. Monsters explode into crystals. Shut up. Stop thinking about it. Now that was a surprise, I tell you. Did you put that thing away? <laughs> yep, it's all taken care of. The light emitted by raw septium has the power to attract monsters. This mushroom also seems to have the same effect. That sneaky merchant. He never mentioned a single thing about this. Anyway, let's hurry back to town. Right. Just wait till I get my hands on you, you conniving merchant. Oh, Orvid. You're gonna get brained by Estelle. Still don't take none of that. Let's get back to town. <laughs> I, I'm not a huge fan of Orphid either, to be honest. Oh, maybe someday he'll be useful to me. But right now, if you don't like him, then I can't blame you. <laughs> not exactly uh, one of the best first clients we could get. You know what I'd like to do is... I'd like to see if El uh, Alien Armin are around now that a, a day's passed, but I still haven't haven't seen them since they officially start going out. They've got to have at least one more appearance in Relent somewhere. But uh, off camera, I was pretty thorough on checking for them. I went to uh, like all the buildings inside of town and whatnot, and I never saw them. Could it be that they left the town when uh, when Cassius did? Maybe. I don't know. What's that, you say? You found the mushroom? Yep, we found it, alright. Oh, wonderful. But it might be different than the one we heard about from you. You see, this mushroom attracts monsters. Oh, uh, well, it's like this. So even though you knew of the risk, you hired us for the job, Orvid? What? How was I supposed to know something like that? And besides, a person's job is to deal with danger, right? Well, a little heads up would have been nice, so we could have at least been prepared. Never mind us. The big question here is your motive. What do you intend to use this mushroom for? Yeah, this thing could be a weapon. Fess up. You had some big nefarious plan in mind, right? A nefarious mushroom plan! Uh, what? It is... Isn't it obvious what I'm going to use it for? For cooking, of course. What? Cooking? Are you trying to tell me that people actually eat this thing? This is why it's such a pain to deal with country bumpkins. In the hands of a sealed chef, the more distinct the ingredient, the more profound the taste. And from that perspective, the firefly fungus is the king of them all. This is no doubt the ultimate ingredient. So pretty much what you're saying is that it's for people with bizarre eating habits. Hmm. <laughs> That's the talk of one unacquainted with true delicacy. But then again, commoners such as yourself would never have an opportunity to try such dishes. And praise be to heaven for that. I never want to gnaw on a ratty green mushroom like that. Agreed, it looks pretty nasty. Anyway, I have other business preparations to make. Now if you don't mind, I'd ask that you hand over the mushroom and leave. Yeah, please take it. On behalf of this mushroom, I shall turn a blind eye to your ignorance. And as is promised, I will pay you, so be grateful to your client. Nobody's going to buy that mushroom, I hope you know. Come on, Joshua, let's go. Please excuse us, we'll be going now. Yes, please do. <laughs> Nefarious mushroom plan. Yes, is there something else? I'm busy preparing for some business negotiations. Would you mind leaving me alone? Screw you, Orvid. Check around the, uh, the landing port. Nothing here. Hashtag Ellie and Armin watch 2018. Where are they? <laughs> no, but seriously though. We can check on uh, on top of the uh, clock tower again. Actually, I shouldn't say on top of the clock tower. Okay, get get a good look at this uh like this uh little viewing area. Then let me back out. And now get a look at what the tower, top of the tower looks like. So I think that viewing area is supposed to be like that middle area where the guardrail is. But when you're in it, they like cut off the roof so that you can actually see what's going on. It's not perfectly to scale though, so shut up. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just accept it. 
I noticed it the other day. Like, I've played this game three or four times, and I never really thought about it. And I was, like, looking at the, the design of the clock tower, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Something's off about this. Oh, listen to that sound. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. Good work. It seems like you completed your objective without any trouble. If you finish any other jobs, please come back and report again. Those are just for the, the side jobs we did. Now give me a moment. I'm going to check to see if there are any hidden requests in the prologue at all. I don't think there are, but it wouldn't hurt to look. There is not. So, our next big main job that we're supposed to be doing is over at uh, the mayor's house. Which is on the, uh, the east side of town. Do you think the mayor's even in today? Being as busy as he is, I'm sure there's a pretty good chance that he's out. Well, bless my soul, if it isn't a stolen Joshua. Hi, Mayor Klaus. I hope we're not disturbing you, sir, but we've come on behalf of the Bracer Guild about a job you requested. Yes, I heard from the Guild that the two of you would be coming. So you're taking over your father's work while he's away, are you? Well, we're trying to, at least. I'm very sorry about my dad reneging on his promise like this. There's no need for apologies. Knowing your father, it's typical for him to be swamped with work like this. Anyway, with Lita and my wife out and about, I'd like to move this conversation somewhere else. Why don't we head upstairs to my study and go over the details? In truth, I don't think you'll find this request particularly difficult. And it's for that reason, I think, that asking the guild to do this job may have been a bit presumptuous. Unfortunately, I'm unable to get away from my work, and I had to break down and ask the guild for help. We were informed that the, this job involves the transport of a certain something, but what is it exactly that you would like us to carry and wear? I would like you to pick up a septium crystal from the Malga mine and deliver it here. When you say septium, do you mean like Sepith that we often come across? Accurately speaking, Sepith is fragmented septium which is too small to be used as precious stones. Therefore, this Sepith is refined and processed into quartz, which can be installed into ornaments. So that's the difference, huh? I think I've got a better grasp on things now. We've actually been able to obtain a certain kind of septium called Asmelis from the Malga Mine since the olden days. However, since a large piece of this crystal was recently discovered, I've asked the mine chief to hold on to it until someone could pick it up. So you'd like us to pick up this crystal from the mine chief and bring it here, is that correct? Precisely. What do you think? Is this something you think you can handle? The transport of a precious gem, huh? It'd be a nice change from fighting monsters. Should keep us on our toes, too. Alright, we'll do it. I appreciate your willingness to help. Please take this with you. If you show that to one of the workers, they should let you into the mine. Good luck. So that's where it's going to be stored, inside that safe. Alright, ignore that cut too. <laughs> that's nothing, don't worry about it. So I like that conversation we have with, uh, with Mayor Klaus. And they do their best to, uh, to, like, try to give a rundown of, like, what Septium is. I should have included a little bit of information about that in the, uh, in the introductory to the Trails series video. But, to try to reiterate what was said in that conversation, do you think of Septium as like any, like, uh, well it's a fictional, but think of it as like a precious gemstone. Like, a uh, regular Septium can be used to uh, make jewelry and whatnot, it is very pretty and valuable. But uh, fragments of Septium called Sepith, which is the stuff that we have on us that we pick up out of monsters, that's the stuff that gets uh, refined and synthesized into quartz and installed in ornaments. Still, regular Septium by itself, like a big chunk of it's pretty valuable. And that's what we're on our way to retrieve. Let's see, Malga Mine's right here, I believe. This is the entrance to the Malga Mine. If you're not here on business, then I'll have to ask you to leave. Believe it or not, we are here on business. Relents Mayor Klaus has asked that we come here and pick up a certain septium crystal. The cell showed landed the mayor's referral. Well, all right then. If you got a referral from the mayor, then that's a different story. 
I don't mean to make your job any more difficult, but would you mind going inside and speaking with the boss directly? I'm supposed to stand watch out here. Sure, that's fine, but uh, why the boss? We're actually here to see the Mind Chief. The Mind Chief you're talking about is actually our boss, Mr. Gatton. He manages the mine and all of its workers. He's the kind of guy who enjoys discovering a septium load more than eating three meals a day. I'm fairly sure he's working down in the lower tunnels today. Thanks for the tip. We'll go see if we can locate him. Alright, into Malgam Mine. This place is weird. <laughs> so in order to uh, traverse this place, check this out. Check it out! It's a minecart! Do you think it's powered by ordnance too? Looks that way to me. How about we get in and see where it takes us? Um, can I game this? So, I think uh, the first time you ride it, it takes you to the wrong place and you have to go back and switch the track and go this way. So I think this just solved that problem. Oh, waiter, does this operate with a key and do we need the key? Son of a bitch. This is the elevator we're supposed to use to reach the lower tunnels, right? Why doesn't it work? Let me have a look. There's orbital energy running through it, but it appears to be mechanically locked. Maybe we should ask someone about it. God damn it. <laughs> uh, and you have to ride the cart. I actually screwed myself. Well, turbo mode will fix this a little bit. So now we go this way. Let's go talk to this guy. This is so dumb. Great idios. What are you kids doing in down here? Are you friends with someone who works here in the mine? Not exactly. We've come to see the mine chief that requested the mayor. Oh, so you're here about the crystal, are you? Well, if you're looking for the boss, you should be in the tunnels below. If you use the elevator at the end of the tracks on the opposite side of the mine, you can get down there. We found the elevator, but we didn't know how to make it run. Do you know how to operate it? Well, that's an easy problem to fix. All you need is a key to activate it. But since you don't have one of your own, I'll help you out by lending you mine. Much appreciated. Once our business here is finished, we'll make sure to return it. Oh, actually, I might have saved some time. I wonder if what happens uh, if you don't um, have the key is that you like talk to that guy, he tells you to go there, then you go to the elevator, then it still doesn't work, then you have to talk to him again. It's so dumb. I feel like someone was really proud that they made that little cart thing. They're like, we're going to make the player ride this. Estelle, try using that key we just borrowed. We should be able to get the elevator working this time. Estelle, use the elevator key. Looks like we can use the elevator now. How about we head down into the lower tunnels? So you also notice that like, uh, because I tried the elevator first before talking to that guy, there was a unique dialogue. Where she was like, yeah, we tried, but it didn't work. So that's the thing that Falcom loves to do. They love to have like unique text hooks depending on what actions you choose to do first. So uh, like there'll be little variants of how conversations can play out based on what you've done and what you've tried, who you've talked to, etc. So that also adds a lot to the to the uh, script file. <laughs> Here's the guy we're looking for. Heaven and Earth, what are two kids like you doing down here in the mine? You're the mine chief, right? Boy, am I glad to see you. We've been searching all over this dake place for you. We're with the Bracer Guild, and we've come today on behalf of Mayor Klaus. Hmm, I see. So you kids are bracers, are you? That's quite a feat for being so young. Hmm, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. By the way, you're supposed to have some sort of crystal for us, right? Oh, right. Give me a second. This little baby is something you don't see every day, which is why I've been keeping it as close to myself as possible. The mine chief pulls a large green crystal from his breast pocket. Wow! I've never seen a crystal this big before. That is impressive. There seems to be a light swirling around inside, too. It's one of the several types of septium. Specifically, it's an Ismelis crystal, which is endowed with the power of wind. So, uh, this is where the, uh, the green sept comes from, from bigger chunks of septium like this. For a gem of this size, you're looking at a hefty price tag. I'm talking about a small fortune here. Make absolutely sure that this gets to the mayor. R Roger that. It's so beautiful. I feel like I'm carrying a little fairy in my hand. This is super fun. Check this out, Joshua. That's nice and all, but... 
How about you stop horsing around? If you drop it, we could be in some real trouble. Fine, you big killjoy. So I'll put the crystal away in her pocket. Well, I guess that's that. We'll get out of your hair now, Mr. Gatton. But don't worry, we'll make sure this gets to the mayor. I'm counting on you kids. Huh? What's the matter? That's odd. The airflow down here suddenly shifted. The airflow? The scent, it's... Whoa! Ah! Is... is it over? Was that an earthquake just now? No, it seems that there's been a cave-in somewhere within the mine. I wonder if one of the miners hit a patch of loose ground. I'd better check out the extent of the damage. Look out, Estelle! What? We got monsters! These guys are, uh, killer crabs! They were not that dangerous. Why are there... Do you usually have problems with monsters like this? No, this is the first time we've ever had anything like this happen down here. Monsters have a predisposition which attracts them to the glow of septium. So we've had a lot of them wander into the mine in the past, but... Judging from the situation, it may be that the recent cave-in opened up a hole connected to a den of monsters. D did you say a den of monsters? It's not inconceivable. But this is no time to be standing around thinking about it. I've got to get the other workers out of here. If that's the case, then how about letting us help you out? You're kidding, right? Monster extermination is right up our alley. And besides, every minute counts. You're right. Some extra help would be much appreciated. So how many miners are we looking at in all? There should only be four other working here in the lower tunnels. Got it. Now let's go find them. Sorry about all this. All right, take these and use them if you need to. Oh, but he, he continues to follow us, huh? All right, let's save. And uh, when we pick up next time, we'll deal with this little problem. We'll check in on the other miners, make sure everyone's safe. And then we'll go deliver this uh, septium crystal to Mayor Klaus. See you guys in the next one.